The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. What's going on, everybody? It is Monday night right here on Armed Radio, and that means you are listening to Two Beards Talking. I am Daniel Sanders. And I am James Frederick Ryan, a.k.a. Matt Lasseter. James Frederick Ryan. Yeah. I'm the wrong dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, James Frederick Ryan was the wrong Private Ryan. Yeah, they weren't there to save me, assholes. <laughs> Maybe I wanted to go home from war. <laughs> but your brothers didn't die. I thought they did. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Jesus Christ. So like we always do at the start of every show here at Two Beards Talking, we want to give a big shout out to the troops, to the men and women serving overseas and on the home front. We appreciate everything y'all are doing for us. Keep up the good work. Come home safe. We're all rooting for you here back home. (laughs) If you're still pandemicking, stop. Yeah, just stop. Ooh, I wonder if KIB is going to lift the mask order. On October 2nd, like she's supposed to. You know, I mean, she might as well because, um, with the exception of Subway, nobody's really enforcing it. Oh, no, no, no. There is a certain pizza restaurant that is uh, still enforcing it. And Is, is, it, is it related to the, uh, the Hutt family by any chance? Like Jabba the Hutt? Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I happen to know that uh, some shit went down. And it was not good. Well, you know, I went into I went into the subway here in town the other day, and I didn't have a mask on. And the kid who was working behind the counter taking the woman's order in front of me, he either didn't notice or didn't care. But then this girl came in from the back, and there was this old man standing behind me as well. And girl came out from the back, and she was putting gloves on. She looks at me, and she says, uh, you have to have a mask on. No, I don't. No. No, no, not, I don't. Not important. <laughs> not doing it. <laughs> well, we can't serve you if you don't have a mask on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take my money elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, who really just wakes up and goes, you know what? I want some Subway. You know, besides, you know, Jesse Smollett. Oh, yeah, yeah. Besides him. Nobody. Old, old Juicy Smollett. Yeah, old Juicy Smollett. Nobody wakes up and just goes, I want fucking Subway. No, that's that, that's like your that's your contingency plan. Like, oh fuck, this drop through's backed up. I'll cut a subway because they're never busy. Yeah. So, but that's not what pissed me off. You know, we can't serve you. You don't have a mask on. All right, fine, whatever. No, what pissed me off was the old man that was standing behind me not wearing a mask for medical reasons. Yeah, they wouldn't serve him either. Yeah, because they're assholes. So subway, fuck you. Uh, in, in, in other news, I have gone into Walmart so many fucking times without a mask on. They don't even ask me anymore if I need one. They don't ask anybody now, really, anymore. Like the, they just they see me and they go, "Oh, it's this guy." <laughs> like, I took I took mom to, like I. God, I've been to Walmart probably twenty times in the last three weeks, and I took mom to Walmart the other day. Went inside, got her little scooter for her, brought it out to her. <laughs> She wheels herself inside. She stops at the guy and asks for a squirt of hand sanitizer. The guy says, yeah, sure. And then my mom says, oh, can I have a mask as well? And I'm standing there waiting on her. And then the guy looks at me and he says, do you need a mask, sir? No, I'm good. Yeah, they don't even ask me that. Yeah. They've opened up both sides of Walmart again. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And it's, and it's no longer a freaking uh, cattle shoot trying to get in. Yeah, I, I dig that. I yeah. went. I went in the other door to the, the other day. Ooh, how did that feel? It felt great. Did, did 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 it make you feel like an outlaw? It's well, it's my normal door. I don't like going in the grocery side. I know, right? Like mm-hmm. I want to go in on sporting goods side. It's, where, it's probably where I'm going. That or electronics. So I like going in that. That's my door. Uh, yeah. So like, I, I this went, is the Matt Lassiter door. Like it's got my name on it. Like I put. I've it up seen there. it. <laughs> I, I turn it off sometimes. <laughs> I get real mad when you do that. But, oh, but yeah. fun fact here about old Saving Private Ryan. 
I did not learn this until just before we did the show. Nathan Fillion, star of the uh, former TV series Firefly, the film Serenity, uh, currently on the TV show The Rookie. Nathan Fillion played the wrong Private Ryan. And if you're like me and have no clue who the fuck that was until 37 seconds ago, well, congratulations. Yeah, exactly. If you're wondering who Nathan Fillion is, you probably remember him. If you haven't seen Firefly or Serenity... Uh, you've probably seen him in, uh, Dracula 2000, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, Percy Jackson, uh, which one was it? The Sea of Monsters. Yes, Sea of Monsters, where he played Hermes. Which is weird, because they showed Hermes in the original Percy Jackson, and it's two different motherfuckers. I know, right? <laughs> it was like, continuity? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, maybe it's like they did with the Matrix movies where they changed the Oracle between Reloaded and Revolutions. Uh, hashtag she died. Uh, hashtag I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that motherfucker died. He may have. You don't he, know. He just got. He probably just got a little too expensive. You know, at least they didn't do with him what they did with the guy from uh, Gladiator who died halfway during filming his scenes. So instead of either cutting his scenes or replacing him and refilming his scenes... They just digitally inserted him. Yeah, that always ends well. Not. Oh, I mean, you know, for early 2000s, it was... What the fuck? Did, someone just die? The fuck did you just do? That wasn't me, dude. That was outside. Uh... All right, we're back. We had to take a quick break right there to uh, pull security, <laughs> to, to, to pull security and find out what the fuck that noise was. Uh, I'm thinking a meth lab exploded. <laughs> it's a, you, you know, it's possible. Uh, so before we move on to like any news or anything, why don't you why don't you tell the folks tell the folks oh, what you did? Oh Jesus fucking Christ! Yes, I can no longer give you any more shit. About you fucking drawing a knife from the sheath and slicing your fucking hand open because I did the exact same goddamn thing. Only? <laughs> Only it was a hell of a lot worse. I've got four stitches in my thumb right now, and I'm pretty sure I may have severed a nerve. There you go. So we we will call this segment come up come up it's Yeah, yeah. Fuck you and your come up and you know, I almost forgot to mention that, but when we come back in from pulling security, I looked down and saw my knife, and I was like, oh, fucking knife! <laughs> fucking knife! <laughs> so, I almost forgot about that. Oh, man. Yeah, shit happens, so... <laughs> today's lesson, boys and girls, is don't play with knives. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, don't cut yourself if you're going to. Yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> but, moving on to the news. Yeah, there's a lot of it. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She did. She did. And you know, I have to I have to commend Trump. He he gave a really good little thing about he said he said a lot of good things about her. Like normally when people die, he's pretty much a dickhead about it, and he's like, ah, fuck them. But he actually said some pretty decent things about Ginsburg, and so I think that's commendable. You know, for somebody that's normally an asshole about people when they fucking die. No, he's not normally an asshole about people when they die. Just if he really has a dislike for them. Yeah, looking at you, McCain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, he he said some nice things about her. And you know what? I can say this: she was uh, she was a public servant for God, how many years? I don't even know. God, uh, well, let's see. She was born in thirty three. Uh, think she was well she was she, she was, was on appointed the to the supreme court like tw in, like 20 uh, years ago yeah it, it was during the clinton campaign yeah yeah so so she's been on the bench for 20 some odd years uh i don't know a lot about any of the rulings that she did i can say that i probably didn't agree with a lot of them i may have agreed with some of them but uh you know she was a public star she did her job she did, yes, absolutely, without a doubt. And she wasn't one of those dissenting voices to dissent just because she was on the left. You know, if, if she said, you know, she didn't agree with it, it was because she legitimately didn't agree with it. It had nothing to do with party lines. That's the one thing I can say about her. She was not a party line judge. So, you know, but the left's heads are exploding now. Well... They're not exploding so much about the fact that 
Ruth died, more so about the fact that Trump wants to go ahead and nominate someone to fill in that vacant position now. Which, like, like I said, is kind of hypocritical. I, I said it. I say it again. Well, I mean, it's hypocritical on both sides. You know, during the uh, during the Obama administration, you were saying he had uh, what last hundred and forty some odd days in office. Yeah, he wanted to appoint a justice because a, a seat vacated and the Republicans blocked him. Yeah, and now the Republicans are wanting to do the same thing. It's an election year. Trump wants to go ahead and fill the spot, and you know, it's the Democrats are going to try to block. Yeah, except the. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember any Republicans threatening to impeach Obama if he did it. Well, for one, it was his last 145 days of a second term, so. I mean, you can still impeach a president. You could, but what's the fucking point? But and and she didn't. And Nancy Pelosi didn't actually threaten to impeach. Uh, the reporter that asked her that question was kind of being a shithead, because the reporter said, "You know, would you would you consider impeachment?" As she said, we're not ruling anything out. She didn't actually say, we're going to try to impeach Trump if he tries to nominate a fucking justice to take the vacant seat. She didn't say it. But, you know, that's just reporters being assholes. Well, yeah. Most of them are. <laughs> yeah. We're not. We're not reporters, though. I mean, we report the news. We're, we're, we're technically in a journalistic... I call I call us arbiters of truth. It's probably why we're not very successful. Because <laughs> we tell the truth. <laughs> why don't we just tell the people what they want to hear? I mean, we could. <laughs> but we would tell them from our perspective. Which means we'd, really, we'd be really popular with the right-wing people, <laughs> but not so much the left. Yeah. Uh, we'd be like, you know, guns are good. <laughs> and everybody on the left would... Had to explode. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, guns are good. Yeah, they really are. Oh, I think I just heard a head explode somewhere. Maybe that's what that noise was. They knew we were going to say it earlier. <laughs> they they had a premonition that we were going to say guns are good, and their head exploded right outside of my house. Apparently, oh, <clears throat> I'm still going with meth lab. Yeah, that's more likely. Yeah, it really is. Like someone didn't get their fucking bathtub chemistry right, <laughs> blew up the whole damn house. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, you know it's it's been been a couple of weeks since w since we've gotten to do a show here. We've had a lot going on. Um, lots been going on. Lots been going on in the country in the world. Fucking the entire West Coast pretty much is on fire. Still, still, like they've arrested uh, like eleven or fifteen different people in connection with arson, and of course, you know they're. <laughs> They're saying that it's burning due to climate change. Yeah, yeah. You know, climates tend to change when you set things on fire. Yeah, they tend to. Yeah. So I, I guess they're half right. You know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. Here, here's the thing. Like, you know, like, maybe let's don't set things on fire. Like, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to see right now if I can, uh, if I can find anything on... All of this, right? Because you know, first it was the uh, wasn't wasn't it a baby shower or, or it no? It was a gender, gender reveal party. Gender reveal, like <laughs> the most expensive gender <laughs> reveal in the history of gender reveals. I think someone showed a video of someone using a tactical nuke in one of the Call of Duty games, and they <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> 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 like seriously, though, like. What's What happened to the good old days when you didn't have to... Like, I've seen people do gender reveals with Tannerite, fucking all kinds of crazy sh guns and shit, which I'm all for that, you know, have your fun, but what happened to the good old days when you would just go onto Facebook, hey, we're having a little boy, or hey, we're having a little girl, you know, and you didn't burn down 300 square miles of fucking forest. What happened to those days? I, you know, <laughs> who knows? Uh, here we go. It says, uh, this is an article on CNN from uh, September 15th. It says, Oregon man arrested after starting brush fire with Molotov cocktail accused of setting six more after he was released. 
Well, they're getting better at making Molotovs. I'll tell you, I'll give them that. Not really. I mean, this is a plastic bottle. <laughs> it worked, didn't it? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's not a Molotov. It's got that's a, that's a candle. <laughs> did it start a fire? But that's not a Molotov. That's a candle. It's uh, I, it did the job of a Molotov. No, it really didn't. <laughs> did fire erupt from it? That's not a fucking Molotov. It's a candle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm got to call a spade a spade on this one. <laughs> the fucking fire erupted from it. It's a Molotov. I've been hit with enough of them in Call of Duty to know what the fuck a Molotov is. A Molotov breaks on impact. <clears throat> Plastic breaks. This didn't. We don't know that. I'm sitting here looking at a picture of it. Well, then he didn't throw it hard enough. <laughs> Soy boy needs to hit the gym a little more. Uh, it says an Oregon man was arrested after he admitted to setting a brush fire along a highway as wildfires burned through large swaths of the West Coast. Not that I'm defending this guy, but um, why are you admitting to shit that they can't prove you did? Then, they said, he set six more. <laughs> Again, I say, why are you admitting to things they can't prove you did? Domingo Lopez Jr., 45, was booked Sunday afternoon after witnesses said he set a section of grass along the I-205 freeway on fire with what appears to be a Molotov cocktail. It's not a fucking Molotov. It was a candle. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, a candle with gasoline in it. <laughs> we don't know it was gasoline. It might have been diesel. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> and add some styrofoam. You got napalm. And not that we would we know. we did not say that. <laughs> Lopez admitted to lighting the fire, and he was booked on charges of reckless burning and disorderly conduct in the second degree. <coughs> Look, take it from someone that's been in trouble a lot, admit nothing, and deny everything. And make counter accusations. And if they, don't, if, I'm t if they don't have a video of you doing it, then it never happened. Barely 12 hours later, on Monday morning around 3 a.m., Lopez was allegedly back at it. He was arrested once again, accused of setting six more small fires all along the same freeway. Like, what the fuck? How are you so pissed? Are you just like, oh, I'm so pissed off at the government. Mm, fuck these trees. Like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, like when, when, when the people were rioting in Portland and they were chunking Molotovs at the federal court building, I don't condone that, but I could almost understand it. They're chucking Molotovs at a federal court building. This motherfucker is chucking them at trees. What did the tree do to you? Did the tree oppress you? All I can picture now is Eddie Izzard making fun of Adolf Hitler. I can't get the fucking tree. Damn it, I will kill everyone in the world. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This is <laughs> this is the equivalent of that. Like what the like what did the tree do? Did he call you a name? Show me on the doll where the tree touched you. You can't cuz it's a fucking tree. Aim your anger at a different location. Jesus Christ. Says uh, Lopez is set to receive a mental health evaluation. Got <laughs> he fucking needs one. I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> Motherfuckers out here going all fucking, what was that dickhead that used to goddamn fight with the windmills? You know who I'm talking about. Don Quixote? Yeah, he's going all Don Quixote on trees. <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? Uh, and was given citations for six additional counts of reckless burning. <laughs> Okay, I think at this point we can skip past the reckless burning and jump straight to arson. Yeah, that I don't know. What's the legal definition of arson? Intentionally setting a fire? But I think there has to be like like intent to do harm or intent to defraud. Well, let's just see here. Uh, God, one of us needs to get a law degree. Let's <laughs> make this a lot easier. <laughs> Arson, the criminal act of deliberately setting fire to property. Well, trees aren't property in theory. I mean, is it either public or private property? And if it's not owned by a certain individual, then it's owned by the state. Now, see, if you smoke enough weed, you'll think about things like this. Like, who owns the trees, man? Who owns the grass? You need to smoke more weed and you'll be like, you'd ask those questions. Not that I smoke weed. So, <laughs> according to Merriam-Webster... Oh, hell. 
The definition of arson is the willful or malicious burning of property, such as a building, especially with criminal or fraudulent intent. Aha! I knew I wasn't just blowing smoke up my own ass. I read a dictionary once. (laughs) (laughs) And I apparently retained some of that information. But yeah, like, I don't don't know. Trees, man. Grass. What the fuck? Well, uh, <laughs> let's see. Over a million acres have been burned. Um, pretty sure that someone's property was somewhere within those million acres. Oh yeah, definitely. But you know, what's like you know, quit being a dickhead. Like, just don't throw shit at fucking trees. Okay, don't throw flaming objects at trees, especially in the middle of a fucking drought. Or maybe don't throw shit at trees. Period. Like, what did the tree again? Back to what did the tree do to you? Well, a tree did fall on my house a few years ago, so... Yeah, and that tree was cut down. And yeah, so and that tree was killed, so, you know, it's kind of like the Old West. I'm I'm going after its fucking family. But I'm you, taking revenge. Yeah, but you didn't go out there and start chunking Molotovs at trees. No. You were just like, fuck you, I'm going to cut you down with a chainsaw. You bastard. I didn't cut it down with a chainsaw. Oh, yeah, you, you, well, hired, you no, hired a hitman. No, no, that's not true. That's not true. I did cut down I did cut down an apple tree in my backyard. Yeah, but you hired a hitman for the, the tree in question. Yes, yes. <laughs> Had a professional contractor come in. Take care it was of a that. contract job. <laughs> was paid with Bitcoin and everything. Oh, man. Did you find him on the dark web? And you know, speaking of Bitcoin, we're gonna we're gonna go on a rabbit trail real quick. I've been playing this game on my phone. Um, let me get it pulled up here. Oh God. I'll tell you the name. It's actually it's one of those idle clicker games. Uh, it's called a uh, Money Clicker. Yeah. And you can uh, you can start your own business. You can buy businesses, uh, buy real estate, and you can buy Bitcoin in this game. When I first downloaded the game, Bitcoin was at like. Ten thousand five hundred dollars a share. Yeah, for one coin. Yeah, for like a tenth of a coin. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So, I was playing it earlier today. Bitcoin had dropped down to like uh, ninety five hundred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and invest. Or no, no, four thousand. I'm sorry, four thousand. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and invest. Yeah, well, I would. <laughs> I, put, I put about two million dollars of my money into it. <laughs> Yeah, too bad that's not real money. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Waited a couple of hours, and it was up to sixteen grand. There you go. <laughs> Buy low, sell high. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's how that's, it works. That's how it works. <laughs> but back to the news. So, yeah, wildfires, man. The entire West Coast is on fire. Well, see, you can't call them wildfires. <laughs> They're pretty fucking wild right now. Doesn't matter how it was started. It's a fucking wildfire now. Like when, when I hear wildfire, I think, oh no, you know, some like a fire started na- like on on accident. No, no, no. motherfuckers just chunking bullshit at the trees. No, they definitely lump wildfires in with intentional or accidental. It doesn't matter. Yeah, let's let's stop burning down the the forest. I like to play in the forest. I mean, you know, if we're if we're, we're going to do something, at least let's let's just you know kind of burn California south of San Francisco in that area. Let's kind of. I'm not saying kill anybody or anything like that, but you know, if we could, if we could have like a uh, escape from L.A. kind of thing, where like an earthquake separates Los Angeles or maybe even that entire portion of the state away from the country. Look, I've got a better idea. We get about 50,000 people and 50,000 jackhammers, and we just go to the, the, the coast. We go to the fucking the line, the state line, and we just start jackhammering until it separates. Fuck that. Let's just go to the San Andreas Fault. <laughs> okay, that, 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 that may be a little terroristic. <laughs> <laughs> and going to the state line isn't? <laughs> Not with jackhammers. It's going to take more than a jackhammer to set off a fucking fault. Eh, Molotov might do it. <laughs> Again with that word. <laughs> a real Molotov. Yeah, which is real terrorism. You know, just saying. But, yeah, you know. <laughs> it's going to be hard to do the show when you're in Gu- Guantanamo Bay. Eh. 
I don't think they're going to give you fucking internet privileges. They might. I don't, well, I don't know. Maybe in Biden. I'm not, I'm, I might be able to do a show in between waterboarding sessions. It's possible. They might let me do it. Yeah. Like, well, he did really good today. So we'll, we'll let him have some internet access and do one show. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do it now. Yeah, you know. <laughs> nothing I don't like... know if you've ever been water... Have you ever been waterboarded? Um, no. Do, do you want to? Um, do I look like I want to simulate drowning? I mean, <laughs> that's all it is, is a simulation. Yeah, but... Not shitty. <laughs> like, still not, sucks. Not saying that I know how to waterboard somebody. You put a cloth over their mouth and pour some fucking water. It's not waterboarding if you use diesel. No, that's murder. Yeah. It's only if you die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also not waterboarding if you use bullets. I don't want to... Yeah. So, I mean, technically speaking, we're splitting hairs at this point. <laughs> oh, man. What about the debates? I'm interested in seeing how that's going to go. Um, It's going to go poorly for Biden. Have you seen Biden's claim that if he had been president during this pandemic, nobody would have died from the coronavirus? Um, Well, that's just wrong. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty extreme claim to make. Yeah, that's like right up there with like... Saying, you know, if you were president during Hurricane Katrina, nobody would have gotten flooded. What? You can't stop that. But, like, is that something he actually said or something we're inferring because he started stuttering and forgot where he was? No, I'm getting it pulled up now. Because, you know, he does that thing a lot where he calls people dog-faced pony soldiers. And Let's see. This is in the Washington Times. CNN quiet as Biden claims nobody would have died from virus if Trump had, quote, done his job. Well, then he didn't say that if he were president. I think somebody was paraphrasing what he said yeah, in the that, article that I read earlier. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's quite a liberal paraphrase there. <laughs> but, yeah, no, just what more could he have done? I mean, he, he cut off travel from China. He shut down the borders. Like, what more could he have done? Democratic presidential nominee Joseph R. Biden declared at Thursday CNN town hall that nobody would have died from the novel coronavirus if President Trump had, quote, done his job. A whopper that CNN anchor Anderson Cooper let slide. Yeah. Well, of course, it's fucking Anderson Cooper. <clears throat> you know, it's just like when all the people were like, oh, my God, look at how many cases of coronavirus we had. I'm like, yeah, because we're testing more. If we stop testing, I bet our cases go to zero. And here here it is. Quote, and if the president had done his job, had done his job from the beginning, all the people would still be alive. End quote. Mr. Biden said at the town hall. All the people. I'm not making this up. Just look at the data. Look at the data. Okay. Um, first off, your brain's mashed potatoes, bud. Uh, but we do know that the children <clears throat> like playing with the hair on his legs. So they've actually went back and redone some work on the whole coronavirus thing and found out that actually only 6% of the population that they said died from coronavirus died from just coronavirus. Yeah. The other 90 some odd percent had comorbidities. So what about the guy that died in the motorcycle accident that they listed as coronavirus? Oh, my God. You want to see something really fucking funny? When you leave here, go right over the road to that bridge right down the road right before Northeast College. Right. You're going to see a dead deer on the side of the road. Right. And there's some flowers and a sign that says COVID. No. I am not making this up. No. <laughs> it's true. You saw this today? Uh, I've seen this recently, yes. I'm going to have to go see if it's still there. If it's there, I'm taking a picture of it, and it's going on the Facebook page. <laughs> like, it's literally a dead deer with flowers, and it says COVID. We're assholes here in Alabama. So it says, he was immediately challenged on social media by right-of-center commentators and fact checks by news outlets, notably the Washington Post, which concluded, actually, Biden is making this up. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm going to have to give him four Pinocchios on this one. He's getting a pants on fire. <laughs> There is no data to support this. Even if the president had moved rapidly in January to deal with the coronavirus and been able to persuade the Chinese leadership to be more forthcoming about the situation, said the Post fact check. During the event, however, Mr. Cooper did not question Mr. Biden's claim, a sharp contrast from Wednesday's Wednesday's appearance by Mr. Trump with ABC News anchor George Stephanopoulos, who repeatedly took issue with the president's statements. Yeah, they're not... They won't question Biden because he, for one, he can't fucking answer questions. And for two, they don't want to make him look any weaker than he already is because that just helps Trump. Mr. Biden, Mr. Biden, how would you handle the coronavirus pandemic? Now look, fat. Listen, fat. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, you, you, I'm, we're going to get, the th- you, you know, the, 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 the thing and you're just going to jab it in the, you, you know, the place. And 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 nobody needs an AR seventeen when when the when the little children like to play with the hair on my legs. Did you get a shotgun, fat? Nobody needs an AR seventeen. You 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 can you can you can use a shotgun to defend yourself. You dog face pony soldier. <laughs> and that is Biden's response <laughs> to how he would handle coronavirus. Um, verbatim. We're not making this up. That was actually a sound clip that we got from the Biden campaign. <laughs> Kamala, get down from there. <laughs> Wait, was that racist or sexist? Yeah. <laughs> it was ambiguous. <laughs> Take morally, it however you want. <laughs> morally ambiguous. <laughs> like I, I just I don't I don't get it. Like the Democrats are like, we got to vote for Biden. Why do you got to vote for Biden? Well, because Trump's a fascist. Okay. Well, okay. So. You're going to tell me that in three years, Trump has done more harm to the country than, let's say, Biden in 47. Well, and, and you know, the funny thing about that is there's actually an article here on Fox News uh, about the upcoming debates, and it says, Trump previews debate with Biden. Quote, I've done more in 47 months than he's done in 47 years. Which is accurate. Uh, I'm not going to say it's accurate. I'm going to say it's close to accurate. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty strong claim to make. I've done more in 47 months than he's done in 47 years. I can agree with it to an extent. Well, that, you know, you know that he, he's, he's, he's partly right. He has... Uh, He's done, he's done, uh, he's, he's helped with black unemployment. He has. He helped with Hispanic unemployment. He helped with unemployment in general. He helped with the economy. Uh, what did Biden help with? Oh, he helped put more black people in jail. Yeah. More minorities in jail. Yeah. Uh, God. But he didn't, which, which actually causes more unemployment in those communities. Huh. So I guess they're equal in that. Like, they're both doing things for the minority communities, just one's positive and one's negative. So, you know, way to go, Biden. I I just, I still don't understand how Kamala Harris could stand next to this man and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally on board with being his vice president. Because she knows that he'll die sometime soon after he gets elected, if he gets elected, and then she'll be the president. Did you not see the slip? Oh, there was a slip. Oh, where she referred to herself as the... Where, where, where she referred to it as the Harris? Yeah, the Harris-Biden campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, that's the slip, man. <laughs> that, that That's them letting you know what's going to happen. Sleepy Joe is going to get Sleepy Joe'd. Yep. And Kamala Harris will be your president. So, and that is such a cheap way to get the first female president, too. Like, you have to sneak them in. As the VP, and then let the other president step down so that you can swear him in as the first female. That's a sneaky way to do it. It really is. Like, you know, Obama didn't take no fucking bullshit. Like, he wanted to be the first black president. By God, he fucking was. He won fair and square. He went out there and he campaigned his ass off. I didn't vote for the man either time, but he campaigned his ass off. He said what he had to say, and it got a lot of people riled up wanting to vote for the Democrats. Yeah. He did his job. Yeah. Well, you know what? If you want to be the first woman president, you need to do the same thing. I'm all on board with voting for a woman president. 
dare I say, I might have voted for Tulsi Gabbard. She was pretty good. You know, <clears throat> there was a time that I would have uh, Con- uh, Condi Rice. Condole- yeah, Condoleezza uh, Rice. I'd, if she were to step up right now and say, I'm running for president, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, but, I mean, I like I, I didn't like everything that Tulsi Gabbard had to say, but I liked a lot of what she said. And she's a Democrat, but I liked a lot of what she had to say because a lot of what she said made sense. Uh, she, I mean, she's one of those that was actually in the military. So, you know, she kind of knows what she's talking about when it comes to, like, you know, military intervention and bringing the troops home. I trust her opinion. And of all the politics, like... I find it funny that Trump's like, hey, let's bring the troops home. And then all of a sudden, all the Democrats and Republicans together are like, whoa, no, 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 we can't do that. We don't do that. Well, why not? What what good are we doing at this point? Just bring them home. Yeah. And, you know, the thing, the, the thing about this whole coronavirus thing, you know, it's... The new the news is reporting. Oh, uh, you know, January, February, March. I'm here to fucking tell you, the virus was here in like October of last year. At, at bare minimum, like October. Like I'm pretty. I had it in February of this year. I'm pretty sure I did. I didn't get tested because I ain't a bitch. I just fucking ate that shit and went to work. But I was one of those if I die, I die kind of guys. But my, uh, my my stepdaughter fucking had that shit before me in January. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a mystery illness going around the world in, like, December, November yeah. of 2019. Everybody's like, man, I was like, kicked my ass for two weeks. Well, I don't know what the fuck it was. The doctors didn't know what it was. Hey, it's probably coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but that's the thing, like... When you got a communist party in China that, you know, kind of dropped the ball, you're not going to get a lot of help from them. They're going to be like, no, we didn't do that. Oh, really? Just like the Nazis were on vacation. They didn't invade Poland. They were invited. Yeah. Punch was served. Check with Poland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love family guy. <laughs> um, I, still, I still, more than anything, I want to see... Joe Rogan host a debate. No, no crowd, no media, just Joe Rogan have Biden and Trump on his show for a debate. Joe Rogan is the moderator. What was he saying? A four hour debate? Yeah, that'd never happen. Never happen. It's, it's, it. For one, I don't think Biden could stay focused for four hours. Even if he could stay focused for four hours. They're not going to let Joe Rogan moderate for four hours because Joe Rogan's not going to ask the questions that they're okay. Joe Rogan's not going to lob softballs at Biden and then go after Trump. He's going to go after both of them equally as hard. He's going to say, Trump, why did you say this? And then Trump's got to defend it. He's going to go, Biden, why didn't you do this? And then he's got to defend it. He's going to go at them equally. He's not going to be because that's what that's all a presidential debate is these days: lob softballs at the guy you like and ask the hard questions to the guy you don't like. That's all you're going to see that this debate season. So, they're not going to let him moderate one. But God, I wish they would. It would be nice. However, <clears throat> comma dot 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 pause for effect. There is a debate scheduled for. October 22nd, I think, is what I told you. Yeah, I think so. The one in Nashville. In Nashville. Yeah. Currently slated for Belmont University. I'm going to do an update check on that, see if that's still going. Because once once, once we're able to, I'm contacting the Trump campaign to see about us getting press passes for that. I mean, you could try. I don't think it's going to work. Then we're going to get the big old F.U., I passed her. Dead air. Oh, God. It's getting awkward. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Full schedule of the debates. Any day you want to load, there we go. 
Let's see here. Currently, yeah, it's still slated for Thursday, October 22nd from 9 to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Belmont University in Nashville. NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker is the moderator. Uh, Debates will be available for streaming on C-SPAN, and most major news networks will air them as well. I wonder if YouTube will carry them live. That'd be cool. You know, they might. Who knows? You know, I got a little I got a little bone to pick with YouTube for a second. Oh, Lord. What did I do? I said YouTube. Oh, YouTube. I thought you said U2. No, YouTube. It's a little bone. So, you know, I, I watch a lot of gun channels on YouTube. Right. Because, you know, I like to look at guns. It's my thing. <laughs> yeah, guns are nice. So, I've noticed... Okay, so, you know when you're watching a regular YouTube video, it'll just drop in an ad? And that happens. Yeah, well, YouTube, I already know where you're going. They don't, you don't get it anymore in gun videos because no, YouTube is... has nothing to do with ads. I was watching a T-Rex Arms video today, and it was playing just fine, and then it would stop and start doing that buffering crap, like it was fixing to drop into an ad, and then go back into the video. Then it would play 30 more seconds, and it would drop to that buffering crap, and then go back to the video. And it would do that every so often. And so I'd back out and go to another video, play it just fine go to a gun video and it does that crap and i'm like are you actively trying to kill the gun culture youtube they are i mean they've already demonetized channels that deal with guns yeah it's like they're actively trying to get viewership away from it because you can't watch those videos they they come through broken and unreadable yeah it's it's fucking ridiculous so yeah we're going to we're we're going to we're going to try and uh, do a presidential debate and we're gonna try. And uh, if we, if 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 the stars and the planets align, and we get passes to it, <clears throat> we're gonna be doing a show from there. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be interesting. It will be interesting, and <clears throat> you will be able to hear parts of the show here on Armed Radio. But if you want to be able to hear the full show, you'll have to look us up on Anchor FM. That's where we're gonna have the full show at. Yeah. Uh- we only get an hour here, so yeah, and you know it's an hour long debate, <clears throat> yeah. or hour and a half long debate rather. Yeah, so it's going to be a half hour over our allotted time slot here. Yeah, half hour over the time slot here. Plus, you know, there's going to be extras before and after the debate, but we're going to discuss and everything. So <laughs> you're going to get an hour of it here on Armed Radio, but for the full episode, which is probably I'm saying going to be at least two hours long. It, oh God, easily. Um, you'll have to go to anchor.fm and look us up on there at Two Beards Talking. You can go ahead and do that now. Follow us for it and everything. Yeah, to make your life easier. You want to do all that searching later, you can just go straight to the link, click it, listen to it. You can even listen to it live. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's well, I like it. Well, I don't, I don't know if we'll be able to do it live. Oh, we could do it live. I have faith in us. I mean... I don't know if we'll be able to do it live. We might be able to do like a part one, part two, part three kind of thing. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, something like that. But, you know, if we miracle our way in there somehow, uh, for one, some major news networks are going to be fucking pissed. They're going to be like, how did these guys get in here? And we couldn't get in. And to that, my response is, I don't fucking know. <laughs> we're special. <laughs> I, 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 I would, I would say that we paid off the Trump campaign, but he don't need any money. So. He don't. He really don't. <laughs> I can't pay this man off, so I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> offer him a handshake and a steak. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> you know, my uh, my good friend here, Abraham Lincoln's. Uh, you know, he 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 said he could never tell a lie, and we would never lie, Mister President. Yeah, that was actually George Washington. Well, you drive a hard bargain, but here you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, six dollars. That's the best we can do. <laughs> that's a, that's what I make a. Uh, that's a little under what I make an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I can give you a little under what I make an hour. You're not getting what I make an hour. I can't afford that shit. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm excited. I really hope it does happen. It would be cool, but uh, I am not holding my breath. It would be our our foray into the into the presidential journalistic world. I don't know if I want to live my life there. <laughs> it sounds scary and lonely. <laughs> Who knows? They might hook us up with some correspondence passes to the White House. 
one day we'll be sitting out on the lawn listening to, you know, the what 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 president are we on right? Forty third? Forty fifth. Forty fifth, yeah, forty fifth. You know, we might we might be sitting on the White House lawn one day listening to the forty eighth president speak. Yeah, but it'd be better if it was forty five because I want to ask that one question that gives him goes, You are fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Trump, we heard you poop standing up. Is that true? You are fake news. <laughs> yes. Sound clip. Got it. <laughs> Going on the soundboard. Oh, my God. We just, we don't even have to get that. We could just pull that off of YouTube. Yeah, but it's better when it's directed at you. I feel like a, it's a sense of accomplishment. Like you've done something with your life. Not much, but something. I don't know. That question might get her. If we had it, that question might get our pass revoked. Yeah, probably. Like, hey, we're not letting these guys in anymore. They're just causing a ruckus. Although, <laughs> comma, dot, 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 pause for effect. He might confirm it. He, he might. That might be one of those things where, you know, hey, I was just being a jackass, but I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we got the quote. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, Dude, it, it, it'd be cool, but I'm still, like, again, not holding my breath because uh, we don't have the major marketing budgets that, like, CNN, MSNBC, all those guys, they got those. Uh, you know, I mean, we don't really need all that. I mean, I could talk a good game. Yeah. I could bullshit with the best of them. Just get me in a room with Trump. And I'll get us this. <laughs> it's like, come on, you drive a hard bargain, sir. But we we can make this work. So it's like the art of the deal, only it's going to work against him and for us. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one of the biggest backfires, <laughs> dude. I mean, you know, he, he, you know what? He might even like my 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 cutthroat business acumen so much that he might even offer me a job. Who knows? Eh, okay, now you're pushing it a little bit. I didn't say like a cabinet position. I ain't trying to be in fucking politics. Like, like, let me work at Trump Tower. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't think you'd want to work at Trump Tower. Well, I mean, it'd be kind of fun though. You know, maybe maybe like one of the Trump hotels or something. Maybe like 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 like, like one of his golf resorts. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That would be really nice. Like just be head of the maintenance crew. I like what he did. It was uh. <laughs> What was it? It was it was one of his golf courses where uh, he had a uh, he was putting a flagpole out there, and they were like, "Well, it's got to be to this specification, so we can't let you do it." And it, had, it I think he had like a thirty foot pole, and it had to be like a fifty foot pole or something like that. So he just had him take a mound of dirt out there and raise the ground up twenty feet, and then <laughs> stuck the flagpole in it. I'm like, I'll show you. <laughs> I will move earth to make this happen. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> You're not going to tell me what I can and can do. Oh man. Yeah, I'm 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 really excited about that. I hope I hope we can I hope we can make that happen. Yeah, you know. You know, cross your fingers. I am. I am. <laughs> on both hands. Say your vitamins, drink your prayers. As a matter of fact, I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing the double cross on both hands. See? There you go. Double cross. Let's see. Positive, negative, positive. Negative. That's like Positive, negative, positive, negative. And then you got two negatives. So that's like positive. So there you go. You're still in the positive realm. Oh, now you've made it negative again. Take that away. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's it, it would be interesting to sit there and watch mashed potatoes try to form a uh, complete sentence. That doesn't involve talking about <coughs> kids playing with the hair on his legs. Like, if he... Well, see, the whole thing about a presidential debate is you're off-prompter. Like, you have to literally use your brain to answer the question. And, you know, that's the thing about it, too, is... Uh, didn't he just recently try to do an interview without a teleprompter? Uh, I don't think he has. I think he's done every interview with a teleprompter, and he still fucks them up. No, this was... Uh, let's, uh, let's see here. Let me... Because this just happened recently. It was something to do with him with a teleprompter. Either he didn't have one or... He couldn't read it. Uh, the teleprompter screwed up or... Yeah, he, he can't do an off-prompter interview. Uh, 
Yeah, here we go. Uh, Joe Biden caught using teleprompter during virtual event with the AFL CIO. <laughs> this whole interview is going to be off the cuff, except for that teleprompter that you can't see. <laughs> Democrat <laughs> presidential candidate Joe Biden is getting attention and criticism from the Trump campaign for using a teleprompter before answering a question from a representative from the AFL CIO. After the question was asked, you can hear Biden ask someone to, quote, move it up here in reference to the teleprompter. <laughs> so not only was he using a teleprompter, he couldn't even read it. Well, maybe what he was saying was, uh, like, they would ask the question and then someone would type the question onto the teleprompter so that he could see the question. Uh, I think it was more along the lines of... Uh, they would ask the question, and then someone behind the teleprompter would type in the response for him. Well, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt here. No, because it says Biden then pauses and answers her question by reading the teleprompter. Oh, well, sorry, buddy. <laughs> I tried to help you. <clears throat> no help for you. you shot that straight to shit. <laughs> I, I tried, man. Like, There's not a lot I can do for old mashed potatoes here. <laughs> no. He's just... This, God... Like, one of two things is going to happen on November the 3rd. Either Trump's going to get reelected, in which case I'm going to laugh my ass off, or Biden's going to get elected, in which case I'm going to laugh my ass off. Because, I mean, Trump getting reelected pretty much guarantees that... World War Three, No, or War. Civil War 2.0. Yeah, Civil War 2.0 is big igloo. Um, Biden getting elected... <laughs> Break out the lawn chairs, get the popcorn and the beer, and just sit back and watch the show. Well, it's not just that. I'm just going to be sitting there going, all right, so the Red Dawn scenario should be kicking off any day now. Like, they know our president's basically a moron. Yeah. Like, right now, most of the world probably thinks our current president is basically a moron. But he's a moron with a brain that works. And, and, and is smart enough to go, oh, you want to invade us? Get him. Well, it's not so much that Trump is a moron. He's just egotistical. Well, I didn't say he was a moron. I'm saying the rest of the world probably thinks he's a moron. Because, I mean, look at American politics. You can't look at an American politician and go, well, that's a smart person right there. Usually going, oh, my God, they said that. Holy shit. I got to defend this on the Internet. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and this is, you know, I mean... Because we Americans, we're an unruly bunch. We are. Like, we really are. Li like, literally, like, we're going to defend our own. You you can't make, we can make fun of Biden. You can't. Okay? He's ours. He's our idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, we, we're an unruly bunch, but, you know, we take, we take up after each, we're like, it's like the big brother, little brother situation. Like, yeah, it's like, it's like the kid from uh, the remake of uh, Bad News Bears. Yeah. Hey, nobody picks on him but me. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. <laughs> like, we can talk shit about Biden. You guys need to shut the hell up. Because with the exception of, like, two countries, we've kicked all your asses. Yeah. So, and the, the come on, Brits. Like, we kicked your asses when your asses shouldn't have been kicked. <laughs> like, you guys should have steamrolled us. <laughs> And we fucked you smooth up. So we already kicked their asses in WW two. Cheerio, let's do it again. Yeah, that's inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> that but was a quote. I know. But yeah, so you know, he's our idiot. We're gonna make fun of him. Like I don't wish anything bad on the man. No. Uh I just I wish they would just let him retire. And you know, the last thing we're going to touch on real quick, this just happened recently. A woman was arrested for sending a ricin-laced envelope to the White House. <sighs> okay, so <clears throat> not to get arrested by any of the alphabet boys here, but if you wanted to kill somebody, there are about a billion different ways that are better to do it than using the United States Postal Service. You don't think yeah. they're going to check that shit? Yeah, they've got uh, they've got scanners for all that shit. You got a better chance running into the White House and beating him to death with a baseball bat. 
I don't know about all that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm saying ricin versus baseball bat. I think the baseball bat's going to get closer. You might make it halfway up the fence before one of the Secret Service agents tases your ass. Which means you've gotten closer than the ricin package did. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, I'm surprised that that package made it out of the origin facility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how are they not like, wait, this looks suspect as fuck. And they were like, ah, fuck it, send it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, so... If it doesn't uh, leave here, it's not a felony. Yeah, we're go- we're going to be following that to see what uh, happens with that. We're running out of time here, so we're going to start wrapping it up. Don't forget, you can go to our Facebook page at Two Beards Talking. Uh, like us, follow us, interact with us, let us know what you think. Remember, we have t-shirts, the COVID idiots, 10 commandments t-shirts. We have them. Yeah, we do. We've got a limited supply of what's left. So if you want one, send us a message on Facebook, let us know what color and size you want. And if it's available, we'll, uh, I mean, we'll get in contact with you regardless to let you know if it's available, but if it is, we'll get your, uh, information. We'll get one sent out to you. Yep, you know you want one. You know you do. They're also, sh- they're stylish. They are. Uh, also, like I said, don't forget you can look us up on Anchor.fm and you can get more content and shows from us throughout the week there. Uh, more than what you're going to hear on Armed Radio here. So, and if you're feeling generous, dollar a month, five dollars a month, ten dollars a month. Uh, yeah, you know, a you- dollar a month. If you can't afford to donate a dollar a month, then you you need to go sit down with your platoon sergeant and reevaluate your finances. And also, if you can't afford to donate, you know, maybe you married a stripper. I don't know. Strippers are expensive, man. They are. You know, share share it. You can share it with your friends. Yeah, share the show with your friends. You know, maybe they can afford to donate. Maybe. Maybe they didn't buy that $30,000 truck and buy that stripper as an E1. <laughs> <laughs> everyone made that mistake you know everyone did someone's out there feeling targeted right now <laughs> yeah he's like wait wait whoa 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 that was oddly fucking specific <laughs> look i had friends that made that mistake okay there's there's there is some fucking pv2 sitting sitting in germany right now going wait i bought a thirty thousand dollar truck and married a stripper when i was an e1 <laughs> Yeah, I had friends that did it too. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience here. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> it ends uh, in divorce and bankruptcy. It does. So, again, a big shout out to the troops, to the men and women serving overseas and on the home front. We appreciate everything y'all are doing for us. Keep up the good work. Come home safe. We're all rooting for you here back home. This has been Two Beards Talking right here on Armed Radio. I'm Daniel Sanders. I forgot who the fuck I was, a.k.a. Matt Laster. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs>